So, because of this, all of this is really a theory, right, because of the general adaptation syndrome. And it draws to the general adaptation syndrome of the gas in 1956 with Hans Selye. Now, in Selye's theory, he's able to give us a rationale for why this periodization stuff is important, why we're looking at it at all. So let's take a look at this figure. This figure is one of the most important things we'll look at in this module because it will give you a rationale for how you can adapt to things over time. So we start on the bottom left here. If we have an initial overload, if this is our baseline strength, after an initial overload, it's your first time going in the gym, it's a new stimulus, what happens to you? Right? Immediately you go down into the alarm reaction stage. Well, once you go into that alarm reaction stage, what does that mean? That means this is a lot of stress on your body. Right? Your body's having a tough time adapting to that and now it needs to recover. But eventually, your body does adapt and recover to that. And this line represents this, the stage of resistance. The stage of resistance means you've recovered from this initial overload and now, whatever you're training for, in this case usually neural gains or muscle growth, your body can handle more training. Your body's adapting to that, you're getting the progress that you would train for. So after an overload, if it's a novel stimulus, you go into the alarm reaction, then you recover into the stage of resistance and you can handle more training. Now unfortunately, we all hit a plateau at some point, right? And that's what happens here in the stage of exhaustion. Now what we're going to see here is, to avoid this plateau in the stage of exhaustion, we're going to throw out terms like periodization, like taper. But once we hit this plateau, we can continue to train and overreach. If we continue to train and overreach, that's okay, right? Overreaching is different than what's down here, which is overtraining. If we overreach and we taper, a taper in short means to decrease volume and maintain intensity and maintain frequency, which we'll talk about later on. And if we taper, we're able to then rebound, get super compensation and increase and get the most out of our performance. However, if we go past overreaching and we don't taper soon enough, we could overtrain, right? And we've experienced this. We, a lot of us have gotten greedy and so forth and we don't quite know when to taper. But we could overtrain and we can see here now we're back down to below where our baseline levels of strength were. So what this seems to show us is that if we want to avoid, not avoid this plateau, but break out of it or taper appropriately, programmed variation in volume and intensity, the foundations of a periodized program, are necessary to continue to progress over time. But remember, what was necessary to progress before? Progressive overload. So periodizing is going to allow you to appropriately progressive overload over time so you can break out of this plateau. Now, this is an interesting concept here too while we're here. The alarm reaction and then the stage of resistance. If you recall, in muscle physiology, we talked about the repeated bout effect. This is similar, right? So if we have our overload, well, our initial stimulus, we have damage, fatigue, soreness. Well, when we train again, we have less damage. Well, when you can train again is when you're in the stage of resistance and you don't have damage again. You're able to rebound from that, right? So this theory is uh, initially adapted for any sort of stressor in life, but it applies perfectly to exercise, to resistance training. So to break out of this plateau, these variations in volume and intensity, which is periodization, are necessary. So this figure gives us a strong rationale for periodization, to avoid too much damage, to avoid too much fatigue, and to continue to progress over time. Now, this brings us back to linear periodization. We gave this definition earlier, and we were demonstrating the uh, fluctuations in volume and intensity. But if we take a look at this, we can see if this represents this vertical line, the beginning of training of a macro cycle, and this represents where we need to peak. In a macro cycle, again, we're going to define these terms, but is the longest time of training, let's say a year. A meso cycle might be four to six weeks or a couple months. A micro cycle may be one to four weeks. And then a training day, of course, is whatever you do in that day. But if this is a linear periodization model, we can see volume starts high and gradually decreases. Intensity and sport specificity start low and gradually increases. And there's a point where they cross here, right, where intensity overtakes volume as the primary variable as you begin to peak for competition, right? But again, remember, linear periodization stipulates training across each mesocycle. So the changes are gradual, about every four weeks. For resistance training, you might go from four weeks of a hypertrophy phase to four weeks of a strength phase to four weeks of a power phase. So during that time, hypertrophy is the highest volume, power is the lowest, hypertrophy is the lowest intensity, power is the highest. So as we just alluded to these terms, we have to talk about the division of training within a year, right? So within a linear periodization uh, macro cycle, we can say, hey, 
One macro cycle is one year where volume will go all the way from its highest to lowest, intensity will all go all the way from its lowest to its highest. But within that, we want to be able to divide things up. So we can say, hey, we have a volume or a hypertrophy type mesocycle. If you have a volume or a hypertrophy type mesocycle, that's let's say six weeks of training. Now, right away by the terminology, you say volume type, where's volume the highest? Early on in the year, so that volume mesocycle is over here, where volume is higher. If you have an intensity-based mesocycle, then intensity-based mesocycle comes when? Later on in the year, right? So that, that way we can break these things up within a linear model into blocks, and we'll talk about mu that much more as we go along. But to define these terms, we're going to use the term mesocycle quite a bit. That is referring to two or more cycles within the macro cycle, each lasting several weeks to several months. So one training block, let's say four to six weeks or so, typically how we would write it for our purposes, that's a mesocycle.